Speaking of vegetables and pooping, you don't need vegetables to poop. This is a good time for Harry's question, which is why do so many so-called quote unquote diet experts promote vegetables for a healthy gut? Do we need vegetables to have a healthy gut? My answer is no, absolutely not. And I will show you literature that absolutely debunks that theory. And I don't know why people continue to believe this is the case. Here is the framework for my answer to this question. Most people in the gut world who believe that they are gut experts or who think about the gut would look at a metric called alpha diversity, which is a measure of the number of species within your gut as a measure of quote unquote gut health. There are epidemiology observational studies that show that in areas where people have more fiber, they have better alpha diversity. But that does not mean that more fiber from vegetables cause an increase in alpha diversity. And as I will show you, there are interventional studies where fiber is increased in someone's diet and there is no change in alpha diversity. The gut doesn't get any healthier. They did something else which did make the gut healthier, which I'll tell you about in a moment. And that can be a part of an animal-based diet, but it is not vegetable fiber. So all I can say is that the majority of these pundits who believe that fiber from plants is necessary for healthy gut are looking at epidemiology. They're looking at observational data because you look at interventional data and you do not see this. There are interventional studies I have talked about in the past showing that adding fiber does not increase alpha diversity, removing fiber does not decrease alpha diversity. And there's another study that I'll show you right now, interventional study, another study showing adding fiber does not increase alpha diversity. So all these people saying vegetables are necessary for a healthy gut, they're all wrong. They're not reading the literature. They're parroting what everyone else says. You don't wanna be fiber fueled guys. That's a horrible idea. Um, and I think it's just going to make you fart a lot. So this is the study I was talking about, um, from Justin Sonnenberg's lab. Would love to have a conversation with Justin at some point, but gut microbiota targeted diets modulate human immune status. So this is in humans. This is from Stanford. Okay. Diet modulates the gut microbiome and gut microbes in turn can impact the immune system. I'm reading from the ad track. So this is a 17 week randomized prospective study design combined with omics measurements, right, uh, of the microbiome and host, including extensive immune profiling. We found distinct effects of each diet. They used two different diets. They had plant-based fiber or fermented foods. Those were the two interventions. High fiber consumers showed increased gut microbiome encoded glycan degrading CAZ enzymes, despite stable community diversity. There was no change in alpha diversity <laughs> with increased fiber. Gut micro, uh, microbiome encoded glycan degrading CAZ enzymes, because you're giving your body more fiber, of course, it's going to have more fiber, plant fiber degrading enzymes. Three distinct immunological trajectories in high fiber consumers corresponded to baseline microbiota diversity. Alternatively, the high fermented food diet steadily increased microbiota diversity and decreased inflammatory markers. Ah. So they say our results indicate fermented foods may be valuable in countering the decreased microbiome diversity and increased inflammation pervasive in the industrialized society. Okay, fair enough. I'll agree with you there, Justin. But you got to admit, Justin Sonnenberg, increasing the fiber did nothing for the microbial diversity or the inflammatory markers in the study. Why are people continuing to stay on the bandwagon of eat more fiber, plant fiber is good. That is complete bullshit. But what is not bullshit is fermented foods. Now, first question, why is there an inflammatory phenotype in the industrialized society? I would say it's seed oils and lectins from your vegetables. You can remove those. That will remove inflammation from your gut as well. If you guys have seen any of my stories on Instagram, you'll know I do fermented goat's milk kefir every single day or I'll do fermented uh, cow's milk kefir every single day. I'll do a video soon on Instagram showing how I make that. It's real simple. You take milk, you take kefir grains, and you combine them, and you leave them outside in a glass jar with a top on it for a couple of days, depending on the temperature. It's warm here in Costa Rica. Within a few days, I can get fermented milk. There's less lactose in there. It's raw goat's milk or raw cow's milk, and it's great. If I drink goat's milk or cow's milk without fermenting it, I will get stomach pains and gas because I am lactose intolerant, but I ferment the goat's and cow's milk. So that is how I get fermented foods in my diet. You can get fermented foods in your animal-based diet in a variety of ways. If you don't want to do dairy, you can make water kefir. You can just take honey and mix it in water and you can put water kefir grains in there. People say honey is antimicrobial. It works fine. You can ferment honey in a jar with water kefir grains. Some people will take processed sugar or brown sugar. I would not recommend those. I would take, I've fermented coconut water in the past uh, with kefir grains. You can do all sorts of natural sugars 
with kefir grains, either water or milk kefir grains, and you can get some fermented food in your life on an animal-based diet. I think it's great. Like I said, I'll do a video showing that very clearly, but there is no indication that fiber is beneficial for the gut in terms of inflammation or alpha diversity. People are just wrong. 